I'm going to show you how to take your chair from this to this. Hello YouTube, I am so excited for you to be here today. Um, my name is Paula and this is my channel. I'm so happy that you decided to stop by. I'm going to show you how to make a baby throne chair today. Yay! I hope that I have made the tutorial easy enough for you to understand. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get right down to it. Um, I don't want to postpone anything any longer. You can get the majority of, I'll say 80% of all the material that you need from Walmart. All the wood that you need will come from Home Depot. Um, you will need the one long board and the two fencing materials is optional and wooden appliques. Um, you get those at Home Depot. Um, one other place is five and below and that's where you would get the Eva phone. You will find that back in the exercise section of the store. And lastly, a thrift store. I found my uh, toddler chairs at a thrift store for only $2.99. Um, you may have to search the internet if you cannot find one anywhere, anywhere else. The wood cutting you can get done at Home Depot. Um, just be sure that you know the size of how tall uh, you would like your chair to be and that you notate the width of your chair so that it would line up evenly. First, you got a chair. Let me put this back right here. That is our toddler chair. Now, as you can see, I painted this chair. I only painted the legs, but that's all that I needed. Next, you need a piece of wood. See how long this wood is? Wood ends up from one side to the other side of this. Help y'all get the visual. Now, we're going to bring these bad boys in. Now, if mine were even like they were supposed to be, Go. right now here we go now this is still going to line up because I'm short on my board but on your board everything should still line up together this should line perfectly at the end of this so I drilled um, a total of one two three four five six seven eight eight holes in this wood and I um, put the twisty ties in and locked it securely before I add the foam, I'm going to get my Eva foam. I'm, I'm going to cut this Eva foam so I can make my, my heart uh, or rounded shape. You know, so yeah, we're going to need scissors. Or if you have an exacto knife, that'll be nice. Okay, you guys, we're starting to look real crafty here. Here we go. Okay, um, this is my Eva foam. Um, this is an apple shape. This is like the best apple that I can make. I'm going to put this shape right here, um, my four holes down the center. We're going to add the cushion and the foam um, to this and we're going to get started. You see, one layer, one foam right here and it looks like it's going to take two to make the backing. Let's cut the foam to the shape of the chair and I am going to um, apply it. Now it's staple gun time. So what we're going to do is begin to staple our foam onto our chair. So um, I have four pieces of uh, foam that comes in a package and I will be adding my foam. So um, what I'm going to do is I am going to begin to staple and um, I will come back and show you the finished product after stapling. This is um, spray adhesive and this is great for having foam stick to things. So um, it's high performance spray adhesive. Um, it's um, 
it says that it's for wood, metal, acrylic, foam, fabric. So this is some really good stuff. Um, you have to spray it in a well ventilated area. Um, in the room I'm in right now, it um, has windows all around. And so, um, so it's very ventilated. So, um, yes, but you'll probably have to do this outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this onto the evil board and I'm going to place my foam on top and let it dry. So um, about the cushion for the seat. Now you can cut it and staple it to make it, um, you know, stay to the, the chair. But um, for more cushion, I find it better that you roll it and it gives it a cleaner line at the bottom of the chair. So instead of cutting it, you would take it, staple it down, and then once it's stapled down, you roll it over, and then you begin to tuck as well your ends, so you have well-rounded ends, so that you have a well-rounded ends. Pick up the fabric, staple it down as well, and roll, and then staple in the back. And this would be the product that you would get from the chair if it was stapled down. I'm not stapling it down to the chair because um, I added something a uh, special something to my chair and so I have to go about it a different way but because I know everybody won't have the lucky findings or you may will that um, that's my daughter in the back I apologize London and so um, you can do it this way so therefore you know you still have a nice cushion on the chair and then it's stapled down and so and, and then that would be the finished product for that because I didn't use this. Um, I used something else and because it's metal and it, I can't staple to metal, I did it this way. And so it was like, oh, I, I, I got tape on the chair. I did because I had to kind of secure it somehow before I put the fabric on it. And so um, once I put the fabric on, on my project, it would be nice and secure. And so that's what I'm doing for my chair. Um, so as you can see, I got identical chairs. And so um, they were both uh, $2.99. And so later on, I'll probably be able to do something with that. Um, this is a shelf. And you can probably use this shelf for many things. You can find these at your local thrift stores. Um, this is easily, it easily can be taken apart. So, use it to your imagination where it can go, where it can be on your chair. But, just a little inspiration, you know. So, we're going to continue on. Okay, this is how it looks after... Um, I sprayed the adhesive. Um, it worked very nice. I'm very, very happy. Now, I'm getting ready to apply the fabric. I found this pretty, um, elegant fabric that I thought that would really make the chair. Now, it'll be easy for you to, on the bottom cushion, to roll and, and tuck the fabric underneath um, the the foam or you can take the fabric fold it not leaving any edges or ends out and staple it to the chair um, I suggest because I'm not a, a poster um, if you want to look at other videos on how to uh, upholster a chair that would be the time to 
do that with this um, a poster um, a chair and so I am not a poster I'm just somebody that's trying to be creative and make um, make something awesome so yeah that'll be great and so um, it's going pretty well so far um, like I said um, I this is my first time doing this um, I have um, real poster chairs before but I look it up on a YouTube video if you want a professional look to your chair and you want to do this um, in some kind of spectacular way um, I will post one down at the bottom that I think that would be great for this chair um, but I'm using a staple gun and pretty much um, using a staple gun to fold fold uh, the fabric and then staple it down because um, you're like okay but you're gonna see the staples yes you will see the staples but um, that's where the tacks are gonna come in handy because you're gonna hammer the tacks over the staples in a row and it's gonna give it a decorative look and a more finished cleaner look I have enough fabric to turn the chair around and take the staple gun the staple gun and I am going to tack it to the back of the chair going all the way up I upholstered the um the chair um, I didn't do the back yet um, I just did the front we turn it around yep the back is looking crazy. The madness of it all. But I'm about to pull it together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the fabric on the ends. And I am going to over overlap the fabric on the back to cover the back. And I have the studs um, that I'm going to use to go up and around. Um, to kind of give it a little decorative feel in the back. You know. Am no professional at this. Um, if you like to look up a YouTube video on um, tuffing, then um, that would be a great idea right about now. But I'm gonna use these um, upholstery nails that I got from Walmart for 97 cents, and I am gonna hammer them in so um, so that I don't have to drill it through the back. So um, I'm gonna test it. Um, I know the question would be if it will hold. Um, I will find out. So here we go. Okay, so I started tufting. And I started tufting with nails. I started out with the upholstery ones, but they are not holding in. So I'm gonna do nails and um, I have some rhinestone beads, uh, stones. And I'm just gonna glue on or um, to cover that. I just actually just looked at some tubbing or whatever and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this uh, two, three pattern. Two, three, two. Um, going all the way down. I could see probably just one that's probably an eyesore for me that it should have been more up. But other than that, the rest of it looks pretty good, you guys. I'm about to get started on the back. And I'll, um, and I'm just going to cover the back now that I'm finished doing my tuffing and so I'm taking the fabric all the way down to the ground and around here so um and along this line I have my little upholstery nails I will add my upholstery nails on top of this area right here um to cover any of that and upholstery nails are going to go up the side you to add the rhinestones um on here where I tuck, I got it laying down on its back right now. And okay, um, the rolly ends, um, around ends on my chair, the on my chair, even though I know that everybody isn't going to have that or be lucky enough, I'm sorry, to find um, the piece I did um, to lay my cushion down in. I put the rollies on the end, but you can still add your rollies on the end if you want to. This is a pool noodle from um, Dollar Tree. And this is what I did. I took the pool noodle and I cut it. And um, what I did was 
try to show you this. Um, I cut the pool noodle, me um, noodle, <laughs> the uh, pool noodle, and then I cut it down the middle. And so I'm gonna show you that. Now my pool noodle is cut in half as so, like that, all the way down. Now I'm gonna add the fabric. Okay, here I am. Now all I did was do a tuck. All I had was an extra piece of fabric that I put in that I tucked on the inside and I used my uh, glue gun to, to, to hold it in there. And so now it's a barrel. Because you don't have this part right here, you can also take the, um, the noodle and still place it on its side as a cushion. You can sew it, you can hot glue it, whatever your choice is to keep it on the side, but I still think it look, make it look great. Let me snap mine back on. Um, so that's an additional thing that you can do to, you know, to your chair. I need 6,000 glue. I'm going to pour some in here. And these little parts where, where I uh, made the tub. And I'm going to drop my rhinestones in. And I'll come back and show you how that looks when I'm done. Now this piece that goes on the top of my chair, I found this at the Dollar Tree um, at, during Halloween time. It had a picture of a skeleton in it. So I fell in love with the picture frame so I bought a couple of them and I just so happened to have this on hand. But, and um, I understand that um, it may not be in the store at the time that you're watching this video. Um, I have other ideas. Um, if you go into Home Depot, there is a section where it has carved out a wooden applique. Once, once you have the, this as the back of the chair, I cut this to go along this, and so I would glue it on to, once, once it's cut, onto the chair as so, before you um, add the fabric. So let your fabric be the last piece that comes over and covers this. Here is the back of the chair. There's a little bunching that occurred, but that happened because um, of extra fabric I was trying to pull. It didn't have the fabric to pull over. So bunching occurred, but that doesn't break the look of the chair. This is the back. How the chair looks from the back. And our chair. These are the glued on um, rhinestones. Um, this is how I repaired the side, just tucking. I just tucked them and I nailed the tacks to it. And it's finished. So there you have it. You finished your chair. Yay, I'm so happy. Um, I'm very excited about what I've made and what I've done. Um, I hope that you subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials. I am also making a adult throne chair um, for my next um, tutorial. So I hope you stop by um, to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm happy. You guys continue on happy crafting and have an awesome day. Bye, YouTube.